The oldest foundation of the Cistercian order in the Low Countries was the Tadonan Abbey. The mighty cloister was built in 1311 in the centre of the Flemish dune landscape, a site which fully illustrates the withdrawn lifestyle of the Cistercian monks. The imposing ruin is still witness to the powerful appeal of this abbey. In the 13th century, no fewer than 368 monks lived here. But the iconoclasm of 1566 proved fatal to the order. The monks were driven out and the cloister destroyed. This pattern was often to be repeated in the history of the monks' idealism. Every cloister is an experiment, a temporary settlement. The Abbey of Hamixum suffered the same fate. This cloister used to be called St. Bernard on the Skelt. The proud foundation could boast of a long and stormy history. The abbey set up the first brick oven here in 1256. In 1566, the iconoclasm was raging and the Spanish occupied the building. Devastating fires in 1582 and 1672 were followed by periods of major growth. Nevertheless, in 1797, the monks were again driven out and the buildings turned into a hospital. but the monks proved to be more resilient than their temporary home and they established themselves in Bornham. The St. Bernardus Abbey in Bornham used to belong to the Crutched Friars. The insistent idea of poverty was already established, so it well suited the Cistercians who were bound to the purest simplicity. With such a history behind them, it is inevitable that these monks have a deep understanding of the transitory nature of human foundations. Robertus of Solom and Bernardus of Clairvaux wanted to live with their brothers in solitude, independence and soberness, both at home and in the church. The foundation of the order itself was a reaction against wealth in the cloisters, exuberant forms and rich accoutrements. They had to be lowest. God was the highest. They had to become smaller. He greater. No wonder that the memory of Bernardus of Clairvaux is venerated here. In the choir stalls, many of the scenes illustrate the life of this shining being from the 13th century. He was the arbitrator between the nobility, a preacher of the Crusades, and at the same time, the strictest living monk in Citeaux. In spite of all these activities, he still found time and the means to write a major work on mysticism, dealing with Mary, the mother of God, the canticles and the imagining of mystic love, among other things. He was advisor to Pope Eugenius III, 
and as abbot, the inspiring spiritual leader of his fellow monks who lived in abject poverty. We know it. Hemixem is gone. Our time there is over. We live in temporary surroundings. We know that. A cloister is a temporary settlement. And we must not be bound to a particular address and a particular place. A man wants to live. A community wants a fixed and secure home. And they say that monks put down roots which are difficult to pull up. An abbey has treasures, so does ours. But for most abbeys, these are antiquities, paintings. But through circumstances, we don't have these. What we have are basically spiritual treasures, a spiritual heritage. Man wants to know where he comes from, how his ancestors lived. Man wants to know his genealogy. Who were our spiritual ancestors? What did they think, meditate on? What did they dream of? What was their spiritual development? That heritage, that's our greatest treasure. We cling to our spiritual ancestors. Not they, the Cistercians have written. We have collected here in our library. We have classified them all and bound them in black and white, the colours of our Cistercian habit.
Are we rich? Uh, yes and no. The cloister is rich. The community is rich with its heritage of writings. The fathers are not rich. They've become poor again. I don't know what the books are worth in money. I can't count the thousands. But what this is all about is that it's a spiritual heritage, a collection which must be kept together, a collection of theology, exegesis, scriptures, mysticism, and the lives of the saints, and so on. People often say, why don't you sell these art treasures and give that money to the poor? There's still so much suffering in the world. I don't think that's a solution. I don't think that's allowed. This is a heritage which has to stay together. And if we were to sell it, the most important pieces would probably end up at a sale in London. They would be bought by an American car manufacturer or an oil shake then they'll disappear in a private collection. Then they'll be lost as an art heritage, a cultural heritage. Whereas if they stay together here, they're always available for everyone to consult, and they'll keep their value as a cultural heritage. As far as the rest goes, we lost nearly everything during the French Revolution. Not only the buildings there in Hemixem, but also a large part of our art treasures. That's how our pulpit ended up in Antwerp Cathedral, as have the communion rails and the confessional chair. The altar went to the St. Andres Church. The beautiful choir stalls later went to the Netherlands, and there, at the end of the Second World War, they were destroyed in the church at Wau when the church caught fire. And then there are also the museums, the archives. You can still find lots of our art treasures from St. Bernard's everywhere. Many cloisters have a picture of the Arbor Vitae of their order. The Cistercians in Bornem have an arbor vitae of their martyrs, brothers killed in many stormy periods, sometimes as many as 2,000 at once. You can see such an arbor vitae in the cloister of the Cistercian sisters in Flanders at Col and Kerniel. The holy sisters of that order are portrayed on it, starting with the holy Humbelina, their first spiritual mother. She was a sister of Bernardus. The picture was painted in 1635 for the Abbey of Godsfrede near Hoy. Every cloister has its treasures. The reliquary shrine of St. Odilia is the treasure of the Marienlof Abbey of St. Odilia. Her relics were venerated in Cologne and brought with due ceremony to the Crutched Friars Abbey at Hoy in 1287. The sisters lovingly care for their precious possession. A large part of his heritage dates from the time the Crutch Friars lived here. They are preserving it for the future.
Almost five centuries after the shrine was made, Martin Bay from Liège painted 14 scenes from the life of the Holy Odilia. The legend of this patroness of the crutched friars is brought to life in the church's oak choir stalls. I don't know if it's historically correct to say that oak wood had to be painted as otherwise you had to pay taxes on it. And so our sisters worked days and nights and months to remove the paint which had been on for years and was made up of many layers. It took a great effort. But what a shame. The altar, which was so beautiful, was repainted by the Preservation Society. Sister Maximilienne started a school for poor children in the little village of Kernil. A boarding school was later added to it. It was then that new sisters started to stream slowly into the cloister and a real abbey farm was founded. They returned to their source. According to the old ideal, those in the holy orders had to live by the work of their own hands. It's a complete farm with dairy cows, pigs, chickens. The sisters used to work the farm, but now there's just one sister and a manservant to do the work. We transferred our activities to hospitality and tourism. <laughs> Twelve still remain, 
but the voice of Bernardus of Clairvaux rings out over more than eight centuries. Serve the Lord with hope, he remains faithful to his promises. Serve him with thankfulness, for he is generous. The walls are getting old, and we are slowly growing older too. And the love for the house also grows, for the tranquil building where we still find our good Lord. We longed for tranquility in our lives, and we found happiness in this. People are surrounded by bustle, and they look for that. We are of another sort, who don't desire that. The quieter the better. The Lord doesn't speak in bustling places. We don't know if our house will survive in the future. The future belongs to our good Lord, not to us. And what he does, he does well. So we leave all that to him, and we don't worry about it. You can buy everything in a department store, but you can't buy novices. That is something only our good Lord can bring. He must show them the way to Colon. We only have to do what we have to do, what we vowed to do in front of our good Lord, working for him and our fellow men. <laughs> 